and support your development, a place for growth, innovation, and change, one with instructions of best interest at heart, to make every lesson with exceptional standard education, an environment that supports tomorrow growth, one that delivers quality education to groom you and set your potential so high to become an entrepreneur or join the workforce. Be good you to be environmental cautious and facilitate its best practices. But that's not all. You need a clear runway with the best facilities to equip you in delivering the best quality health to bring out the best in others and we believe that the best meal and service you can deliver is the mixture of etiquette in reception and just a dash of courtesy while you at it rejuvenate with a variety of sports and associations that build your skill and enhance your development because when you come to university it's people meeting people learning from others working together and building something bigger than ourselves. The good conversations, expressing who we are and the relationships we establish. Are you ready for change? Because we are for you. Join us at Cresso University. Feeling uncertain about your future. There is a place, a place that ignites the passion to explore the meaning of achieving goals. A place that allows you to connect with the you in you. A place that says to you, never give up, bringing out the fearless you because you know you can do it. offers you an opportunity to study on distance, full-time and part-time in our health sciences program. Enroll for a Bachelor of Science in Medicine, Bachelor of Science in Public Health and Diploma in Clinical Medicine. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It is another time that is most awaited at Kresu University. Yes, it has been two years since the elections were held at Kresu University. And this year, 2022, Kresu University brings the elections that gives away and an opportunity to all the students at Kresu University to elect their needful and needful leaders here at Kresu University. And right about now and today, we are going to be going through the electoral process that is pertaining at Kresu University, as well as having a debate session that is going to consist of those that are standing in as presidents and those standing in as vice presidents. So we want you to stay tuned to this platform as we deliberate more and more give you guidelines on how you can vote if you are a Creso student and also the way forward as we go forward as well as uh, just meeting those needs that uh, the students have. Believe me and hear it from us. Creso University this year has it for you and on the 18th of this month Creso University will be voting. So right about now we're going to go for a short break and afterwards, we go straight to the sensitization process, which will follow up with the debate session that will consist the presidents and the vice presidents. Stay tuned and catch us on the other side. Amazing, isn't it? The zeal to want to grow, to become better and achieve greatness, to want to learn, 
and expand in your profession. But wait a minute. You need a conducive environment that couches and supports your development. A place for growth, innovation, and change. One with instructors that have your best interests at heart make every lesson with exceptional standard education an environment that supports your moral growth one that delivers quality education to groom you and set your potential so high to become an entrepreneur or join the workforce build you to be environmental cautious and facilitate its best practices but that's not all you need clear runway with the best facilities to equip you in delivering the best quality health, grouping you to bring out the best in others. And we believe that the best meal and service you can deliver is a mixture of etiquette and perception and just a dash of courtesy. While you're at it, rejuvenate with a variety of sports and associations that Build your skills and enhance your development. Because when you come to university, it's people meeting people, learning from others, and at the end of the day, it is working together and building something bigger than ourselves. Good conversations, expressing who we are, and the relationships we establish. Are you ready for change? Because we are for you. Join us at Crystal University. Feeling uncertain. Welcome back. It is that time we get on to the sensitization session. My name is Sharon Chapula, and we'll take you on with this session. With me, I have the ECC committee members that will help us run through the sensitization process so that we get to know exactly what will be happening as we are running campaigns. We're getting on to selecting who stands right at the presidential session, at the vice presidential session, and going further. So I'm going to head on to the committee members, and they're going to introduce themselves just right here. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Yes, I think we'll start with the lady because ladies always come in first. <laughs> All right. My name is Anshimunya Mwetwa. Okay. Um, okay. Um, okay. Yes. Well, thank you so much. So um, we just want to understand exactly what is the mandatory role of the um, Electoral Commission of Crystal. What exactly are you intending to do in these campaigns? Okay, um, to take that question, I will first of all talk about the main objective of the committee mm. and the main purpose why it exists. Exactly. Uh, so the main reason as to why we exist mm -hmm. as a committee yes. is because we, we are there to facilitate the process and also to know that uh, to ensure that the elections are delivered mm -hmm. free and fair. Okay, all right. Okay, so um, you've mentioned something like the elections being free and fair. So um, what exactly has been stipulated for the candidates in terms of their qualifications to stand right and participate in these elections? All right. For the candidate to be able to vote, mm -hmm. they must be a fully registered at Kwasi University. Yes. And they also have to bring the proof of payment, which is a clearance form or mm -hmm. NVC, because others haven't reached fifty percent yet. Mm -hmm. And they also have to come with the ID mm -hmm. for school, which is the school ID. They can also come with a, an NRC if they don't have the Kwasi School Identification Card. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what happens if uh, the student is under distant learning? Are they also qualified? Uh, yes, qualified, they are qualified. Mm -hmm. But uh, they need to come to that, uh, on that particular date. So meaning that uh, we are not limiting uh, students, because they are also students, so we are not limiting. They can vote, but they are required to come and vote mm -hmm. on that particular day physically. Okay. So has okay. So this is apparently a physical kind of participation. Nothing outlined for the distant students. They'll have to come in physically. No, no, no. Yeah, they have to be there physically. Okay. Yes. 
All right. So um, has, have you placed out any specifications of activities that the candidates ought to put in place as we are heading on to the polling day, just to showcase themselves how qualified they are? Um, I think we, uh, we have a roadmap that we are following mm -hmm. uh, towards the same elections. So we, uh, we had an orientation with the candidates mm -hmm. and we had given the guidelines according to the, to the committee. Mm -hmm. uh, and therefore, um, that comes in like to, uh, it depends with the candidate, how the candidate has strategized to go about the campaigns. Mm -hmm. So we are not limiting them. Mm -hmm. It's according to how they are. Stra stra strategizing uh, mm -hmm. now to go about their campaigns, mm -hmm. so they can they can use different uh, kind of uh, uh, strategies mm -hmm. to at least to uh, to get support from the what from the people from the student students populace. Okay, yeah. all right. So is it a situation where one has to stand in alone, or maybe they can bring in other candidates so that they can at least make noise, or maybe bring out a voice here and there? Well, all right. On that day. We are not allowing anyone like, like to come with people for campaigns because the campaigns will end on 17th mm -hmm. March, okay. which is 12 hours. Okay. From 12 hours, 17th, they are not supposed to campaign, so they are not supposed to come with their people to start making noise. Mm -hmm. Such that it is not allowed. Okay, all right. This is really, really intense, and we are getting to know when exactly find out exactly what's really happening and how the candidates are running and how they are preparing themselves so um in a case of uh, them coming in um let's say a situation where they do something that's apparently outside the regulations that have been placed before them has th is there anything that has been placed before them okay uh thank you for that question i think coming to your question Yes, uh, the reason as to why we had uh, that meeting, orientation meeting, was to give out guidelines. And during that day, uh, we had given them guidelines and also penalties if one had to breach the, the guidelines. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had assured them to say, uh, each and every one of you, if, if any one of you acts uh, out of the guidelines that were given, mm -hmm. uh, the person is likely to be um, penalized. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sure. Okay. All right. So what exactly will happen on the 18th? Because this, this, I believe, everyone is waiting for and everyone is eager for this, including the candidates themselves. So ex exactly what have you outlined for us on the 18th? Okay. Um, okay. Also taking that question, I'll say, first of all, um, students need to understand that um, act academic activities, mm -hmm are going to be conducted normally, okay. like we like they do conduct them. Mm -hmm. um, so on that particular day, we are opening the polling station okay. um, around eight hours. Mm -hmm. Exactly eight hours we are opening, mm -hmm. then closing 17 hours. Okay. And therefore, we have um, provided quite a number of things that we have put in place. Mm -hmm. We have um, we have secured the, uh, the security people who are going to help us run the elections free and fair. Mm -hmm. And also, we are not limiting to candidates. We are, we are, we are also extending that uh, free and fair process to them so that they can bring in someone, at least a candidate needs to bring in someone to standing for the uh, president mm -hmm. so that that person is able to see how things are going uh, to avoid incidences where you find that candidates will come, uh, will come in and start complaining. Say, no, me, they had stolen my votes. Yes. I don't want those kind mm. of situations. Okay. So therefore, we have advised to say, if you have one you have trusted to say, this one can stand in mm -hmm. for me, mm -hmm. we are not limiting them to do that. Okay, okay. So when are they exactly supposed to bring in these same people that have been regarded to be trusted? Is it before the actual day or maybe it's only actual day that they're supposed to present these people? Okay, so on that one, um, they need to register those people before they present them on the actual day. Mm. So before that, we need to uh, we need to meet with those people who are going to stand in for them. So we are we have uh, we are advising the candidates to bring in those people before the actual date, mm -hmm. so that we can also orient those people who are going to be with us, work with us on that particular date. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. All right. I believe that is very clear, and we are certain, and we know that the elections are running, and candidates are really putting in their best their best so um thank you so much for coming through so what exactly are the um candidates expecting from you as we 
run the elections up until the polling day. All right. The candidates, they are supposed to be patient because we, we are there to make sure everything is okay. Mm -hmm. They just have to have trust in us. Yes. Everything will be just okay. We'll do everything perfect. Okay. All right, you heard it for yourselves. If you are in need of anything, you want to confirm on anything, all you need to do is go to the committee and they will help you with what you have requested. But otherwise, this has been the sensitization session. Coming on is the debate where you get to see the presidential candidates come on and just give out their roadmap on how they are going to convince you to be the top president. See you later. Well, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It is a moment that you all have been waiting for. And yes, it is a debate session that every other person at Crystal University has been waiting for patiently. And it is a debate that is going to involve the presidential candidate as well as the vice presidency candidates. And to run and moderate through this process, my name's Anyondo Frank. Now, allow me to give you the process on how we're going to run through this debate. All the audience, all the people in the audience will be allowed to ask a question based on the manifesto that will be given by the candidates. To all the candidates, you are equally allowed to outline your manifesto as well as ask a question to your opponent based on their manifesto. Take note, it must be based on their manifesto and nothing outside the manifesto. To all those candidates that are outside the presidency and the vice presidency, you are going to be given a little platform to just hear out your views as well as sell out yourselves in that regard. So before we can go in the nitty gritties of the debate session concerning the presidency as well as the vice presidency, we are going to give a platform to the aspiring candidates on different, different po positions to also say something and greet the Crystal student populace. Is that okay, Tim? 
Is that okay, Tim? Okay, so I need some vibe from the audience so that we can run through this process without withholding our thoughts. So I want to hear people say, the biu is in the biu The is in the biu biu. That's right, because we are about to get hard and the debate session is about to get going. So right about now, we are going to invite the candidates that are vying for different, different positions to just come in front here and say your names, the position that you're vying for, and something in a second to your supporters. So can we just give a clap of hand to the candidates as they walk up on the podium? So as earlier highlighted, all these candidates that you see walking up here on the podium are going to say their names and the position that they are vying for only and a word to their supporters. Thereafter, we're going to go in the nitty gritties of the debate. So at this juncture, just a tap of your finger when you feel good about your candidate will do about now. So let us give it to the first candidate to introduce themselves and the position they're vying for. Thank you so much, Mr. Chair, for giving me this opportunity. And uh, thank you so much to the viewers. Uh, my name is uh, Francis Lupia. As the aspiring candidate for the position of uh, Minister of Religious Affairs, um, the Bible says in the book of uh, um, Proverbs 29, there's two to say, when the righteous slew, the nation will rejoice. I'm kindly asking you voters to say, may you vote for me? and I will deliver good quality services to you. Thank you so much. Can it be passed on to the next candidate, please? Thank you very much, Mr. Presenter. My name is Amparasha Lewis, but before I go in, in much further, allow me to pass my heartfelt condolences to the family of the fourth late Republican president, Mr. Buzan Panda. Uh, my name is, uh, like I said, I'm Lewis Amparasha, and I'm contesting for the position of the academic affairs minister. Thank you very much. May it be passed to the next candidate, please? Hello, in the Biu Biu. <laughs> uh, my name is uh, Sharon Matanki. Um, Sharon Wise, that's my stage name as a gospel artist. And I'm um, standing in for religious ministry affairs. And uh, as you all know, to say, when your faith, you, when you put your faith in better hands, believe me and trust me, I am the better deal. And it's time for difference. Thank you. Thank you so much. The next candidate, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair Payton. Hello, everyone. This is Macy, your girl, Macy Major, and I'm contesting for Ministry of Accommodation. I'm kindly asking for your vote. And don't forget my slogan, Umuntu Kumutima. Thank you. Thank you so much. Next candidate. My name is Teddy Kapale. Happy Youth Day. Thank you so much. I am an aspiring candidate for the ministerial position of religious minister. And I am also the campaign manager for Elite for Revolution. So please, I'm kindly asking if you can just check my manifesto, give me a vote. I think that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you so much. A hand of applause for all the candidates that have just given you a go. Thank you so much. You may take a seat. Right. So right about now, we go direct and straight into something that all of you have been waiting to get right about now. And that is a debate session that is still consistent in the presidency as well as the vice presidency. Now take note to all the candidates right here. You will be given an opportunity to come in front before anything else to outline your manifesto in less than a minute and a half. You outline your manifesto each. Thereafter, we'll give another opportunity to your fellow candidate. Afterwards, we're going to give you slight questions that are coming from your manifesto, depending on what you have, and as well as the general questions pertaining to Universal University. We know that for a person to vie for a position 
as, as big as presidents and vice presidents, one must be as knowledgeable as they should for that particular institution that they're vying for. And so this is how we're going to run the process. So right about now, we're going to call upon from the right to the left, and you will introduce yourself as well as highlight to the audience your manifesto. We're moving from the right to the left. So right about now, from right to my left, let's get started. You come on the podium and introduce yourself and highlight the manifesto. Good afternoon, students. Good afternoon, friends. My name is Lupekesha Enoch. I'm a business student studying finance and accounts, and I'm the aspiring presidential candidate. Friends, Crystal University is at a time that we need to grow and change. Crystal University has value, and we can return the value and the pride that it deserves. For each and every student that wears the logo of Crystal on their shirt, just as I'm wearing today, the pride can be returned. As a presidential candidate, I am standing for your degree in practice. It is very important, therefore, for us to understand that any individual takes a step and decides to go to university, whatsoever program and field, they must be able to be equipped academically and have the right knowledge and their practice that they need in that specific field. That's what I'm standing for. Be it you're a nurse, a public health student, a business student, or you're in the hospitality sector, I'm standing here for you in that regard. Also, let's look at student inclusivity when it comes to making decisions. Students are young people, and these are youth that need to be consulted on certain policies that the university actually formulates. I understand carefully that Chris is a private university, but I'm one person who has engaged on several times when it comes to policy decision making. And when you're, when you're deciding policies, it is very important to engage the students. The position of presidency is not an easy one. That's why you need a strong advocate to ensure that you guys are included in all the policy decisions and you participate. You air out your views. Aside that, we need growth through associations. We need exposure, friends. This is why we need to vote for the right candidate on the on the 18th of March next week. Thank you. That was Mr. Lupikisha, an aspiring candidate for the position of presidency. So right about now, we take up another candidate who is going to equally introduce themselves and air out something about their manifesto, and we'll take it up from there. Your Honor, sir. Uh, good afternoon, Crescent University family. Good afternoon, all viewers out there. My name is Agyeftin Namenda, and I'm standing on the vice president's position. And before I go any further, allow me to pass my condolences to all Zambians out there globally and locally for the demise of our fourth Republican president, Dr. Rupia Banda. And happy Youth Day to everyone watching and viewers. Why I'm contesting for this president's position, our vice president's position, is very simple. I've tackled some of the issues in my manifesto with management before as a class representative for 3.2 nursing, but I needed a platform and a backup from the union of which I got deaf ears. I stand in to bring effective and timely clinical attachments, effective and timely research supervision that will facilitate you and I's graduation period. We have a situation where students are reaching as far as seventh year who are not done with their research because the supervision is not effective and is not effectively. On Friday next week, as you vote, please put your interest at first, vote based on the originality of the manifesto and the ability to foster and implement the plans that we have. We have issues of missing results. That is just a communication breakdown between the heads of department, lecturers, and the director of exams. That can be bridged if we have an effective advocative and implementive type of union in leadership. We have issues to do with paying for a makeup test that you missed when you paid tuition fees. These are things that we're supposed to be involved when being implemented and uh, suggested. So as I conclude, thank you very much for the platform. Please, as you vote, vote with your problems at heart and put the right candidate. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bear in mind all the candidates that your one minute and a half is exclusively like that. You'll be given another platform to hear out more from your manifesto, but for now, let's take up the one minute and a half to make sure that we introduce ourselves pretty well. So let's move like that. Your President's Imam. Thank you very much for this wonderful opportunity. My name is uh, Patience and Jay Zulu, and I am your aspiring candidate for Vice Presidential Sit. Now, the reason why I am participating, or rather standing as your vice president, I want to empower the women, young ladies at Crystal University to know that if I can do it, 
you also know that you can do it. I am trying to put myself as a role model to encourage each and everyone out there knowing that you have the capability. I want you people to know that this is also about gender balance. You need to know and trust that being a female leader on the executive or rather the vice president, your queries or rather your complaints are safe with me. So you need to trust me on that. I am also concentrating on the debate sector, knowing that Cresa University, when it comes to debate, we are actually, you know, or the one of the top universities uh, when you look at uh, Lusaka, when you look at Zambia at large. So I want uh, that aspect to actually grow stronger and stronger from one level to another. I also want to be an advocate between the students. One minute. Uh -huh. Thank you very much. I want to be an advocate between the students and the administration. I want students to see that um, the administration is actually a father figure or a mother figure. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. The next candidate, please ensure that it is about your introduction. You introduce yourself as well as introducing your manifesto. And that's all that is required of you as a candidate. Thank you. Good afternoon, colleagues. Thank you so much, Mr. Chairperson. My name is Luyando Chonga. I'm a fourth year student pursuing public health. I'm studying in for presidential candidate. And I'm also a leader for a political party, Elite for Revolution. In my manifesto, I stipulated very essential objectives that I'm going to address during my tenure. I have to make sure there's enhancement in student participation, that is through collaborations with existing associations and outside, I mean, opportunities. I understand that in associations, there are a lot of activities that students are doing. And I will make sure that we enhance these participations so that students are heard. Number two, I'll establish a dialogue system. Number three, I'll make sure that I emphasize team building with my executives. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. As we head to the last candidates, allow me to once more highlight that this is about introduction. You introduce yourself as well as your manifesto. Enough time will be given to you to number your manifesto, which will arise with uh, the aspect of questioning and answer. So for now, all we need is for you to highlight your manifesto as well as introducing yourself. Thank you so much. As we go to the next candidate, who is going to lastly introduce themselves and highlight their manifesto, let's just give a tap to one and last presidency, Mr. Killen. Good afternoon to everyone. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. To start with, a common ground is easily reached when people are affected and people from that particular affected area take effective and initiatives to cater for that demand that is needed. And henceforth, allow me to also highlight to you that because of number of things that affect the students and a number of gaps that have been there, it is for this reason that I came up with this strategy. And also, in my manifesto, I highlighted only two things that I would name an objective and an M. To start with, the objective of my governance is only simply by policy development, because through policy development, we would cut off for things that are affecting a number of people, a number of students, such as you and I. And these issues could be the same ones that we are talking about, the biometric issues, can be cut out through the policy development that we can also enforce. We can talk of the communication that come up as a gap of that. And also, we can talk of a number of things that can talk of, uh, we can talk of a number of uh, things such as the aims of the institution putting, not being, uh, putting the interest of students. And henceforth, I'm coming here to also highlight to this house that the interest of students come on the 18th, if put in place, will also come to first. Thank you. This is what a debate is called. <laughs> Seriously, you can see the anxiousness in all the candidates wanting to highlight all the details that they have, even when told to only introduce themselves. 
after this short break that we're going to go on, we're going to come to the neat gritties where all the candidates are going to be allowed a podium. They'll be standing here to number and outline their, their manifesto, which as they are on that podium, the audience, the candidates, will be allowed to ask them questions based on what they are outlining and how based they are going to work on those numbers that they are putting across. So right about now, the BUB is going to go on a short break. And when we come back, the debate, the nitty gritties of the debate starts. It was introduction. <laughs> it was. Amazing, isn't it? The zeal to want to grow, to become better and achieve greatness, to want to learn and expand in your profession. But wait a minute, you need a conducive environment that couches and supports your development, a place for growth, innovation, and change. One with his Instructors that have your best interests at heart to tailor make every lesson with exceptional standard education, an environment that supports your moral growth, one that delivers quality education to groom you and set your potential so high to become an entrepreneur or join the workforce, build you to be environmental conscious and facilitate its best practices. But that's not all. You need a clear runway with the best facilities to equip you in delivering the best quality health, grooming you to bring out the best in others. And we believe that the best meal and service you can deliver is a mixture of etiquette in reception and just a dash of courtesy. While you rejuvenate with a variety of sports and associations that build your skills and enhance your development because when you come to university it's people meeting people learning from others and at the end of the day it is working together and building something bigger than ourselves the good conversations expressing who we are and the relationships we establish are you ready for change because we are for you join us at Crystal University Amazing, isn't it? The zilt that builds your skills and enhance your development. Because when you come to university, it's people meeting people, learning from others. And at the end of the day, it is working together and building something bigger than ourselves the good conversations, expressing who we are and the relationships we establish. Are you ready for change? Because we are for you. Join us at Crystal University. Welcome back to this most heated debate session that has been brought to you from Crystal University and given a platform by Prism Africa. It is the most awaited debate session, and yes, as you have heard, candidates 
cannot wait to highlight, to debate their manifestos, to tell the student populace what is it that they have and that which they have to offer to Crystal University. So right about now, all the candidates are going to be given exactly four minutes to debate their manifesto, explain their manifesto, after which, as they stand on the podium, the audience, as well as the panel, will be allowed to ask a question based on the manifesto outlined, and thereafter, we take it up from there. So we're going to move straight just as we started. It is going to still be starting from my right to my left, and Mr. Enoch Lupikisha, vying for presidents at Creso University, will be our first candidate to outline their manifesto as well as explain to the student populace that which they have to offer. I heard you, the audience, as well as the candidates, to take note of all those questions that you have for them because this is your platform and this is the time. Mr. Enoch Lupikisha, sir. Friends from Creso, the individual studying before you identifies and is defined by three terms. Assertive, I am bold and capable of delivering whatsoever that will be mentioned in this manifesto. I'm vision empowered because I know the vision is clear and that is a better Creso today and a better Creso tomorrow. I'm an ambassador because with me in office, you have a firm representative to ensure that all your demands are definitely met. Friends, as said before, one of the key things I stand for as for president in my manifesto is your degree and your diploma in practice. As this is key, here are, the, here are a few things we are going to do. To begin with, let's ensure we engage all faculties and activities. At Creso, we need cross-collaboration between faculties to ensure that these activities are done. It wouldn't be a bad idea if we have one day where every student with a business actually displays their business. Let's have those from hospitality display their issues as well. That way we are promoting collaboration and growth amongst us as a university. Aside that, let's provide spaces for individuals to practice their degree. Look, every nurse who comes to Creso is supposed to be indexed right in the first years. But what do we have? We've got individuals in their fourth years, in their third years, without being indexed. The attachments are supposed to be going for. They have paid and yet have not yet been there. They haven't gone for attachments yet. Friends, these are things we carefully have to look at. And I'll call you heroes in nursing because I understand even when we had COVID-19, you are the individuals in the front line. You may, we may not have an intense COVID-19 pandemic right now, but trust me, your profession de deserves you to be called heroes as you are. Financial growth is very critical when it comes to you enjoying your degree and practicing your degree. Crystal University needs firm and student-agendered policies financially that supports your education. If us as a university are to get high grades and increase our academic standards, let's ensure that the, the financial policies we're putting in place actually work for us. We have a biometric system. Yes, that is one put in place to ensure that management returns their money, but students need to have their value in place. I would tell you, as a finance student, it is way better to allow students access class, write their exams, withhold their results. These are things we need to advocate for because we know when we do that, you'll be able to ensure that you attend your classes and you want to ensure that you pass highly. These are things that we have to carefully look into. Friends, there's a lot more that I'm actually advocating for. Let's look at students student inclusivity. If you're a student at Creso, you must be included in the policy making and decision making of management. This is why you have a union to represent you. And under that, we've got study spaces. The current library we have at Creso cannot accommodate 20% of the entire student populace. What does that mean? We need more study spaces. Exams will be clocking soon. And where do we expect our students to study from? These are things we need to push and advocate for because we need quality and the best academic education being offered at Creso. Being at Creso must make sure that you are a person who actually values and has pride. Let's look at improved academic systems. When we come to academic systems, we must make sure that students are able to access information without interferences. There must not be gaps between a student accessing information, but what do we have? There are things that are being done, policies being made that you don't even know about, money being discussed that you don't, don't even know about. All these things have to be critically looked into because you guys deserve the very best you can get from any university you attach yourself to. And Creso owes you that among us many. Motivation is one thing that is actually highlighted among us 
student inclusivity. Look, you're a student, you study here. The only motivation you must get must not only be at graduation, you must be motivated as a student to even study even further. But what, what do we get? Tell me a student who got motivated highly, recognized by management because they've been coming top of their class for the last two, three past semesters. These are things we need to carefully look into. You are studying a degree or a diploma, you must be pushed, you must be motivated to do even more and proceed even more based on what you are doing. Aside that, friends, look, entertainment is very critical to all of us. Entertainment is so critical that it's definitely one thing that promotes recreation. Yes, it's a Christian university. We understand family. But let us ensure the recreational facilities that are being provided to show that we have, we have what? Entertainment. In the last two years, in the last two years, Creso has not had a fresher bash to welcome our students. What message are we sending out there to our new students? What message are we sending to the international students? Aside that, we need growth through associations. I'm an active debater that's this morning we were called by Global Platform Zambia to go and debate and I'm being confirmed to me right now that we actually want to proceed to the final stage because we're that effective and we're that good. These are platforms that promote you to grow even better. It's not only debate. We've got Cooper in public health and many other platforms. Let us ensure these things are done. You're a student. There's life after Creso. These are connections. Let's hold seminars here at Creso to ensure practicality. Public health students are busy accrediting themselves to, to institutions. Where is management to ensure that they're included in all these processes? Friends, vote for Enoch. I got you. Thank you. It's now and right about now, you keep standing on the podium uh, without leaving. You keep standing on the podium without leaving. Thank you so much. You have heard it for yourselves what Mr. Enoch Lupikisha has for Creso University and what is it that really intends to give to Creso University. Right about now, we are going to open questions from the audience as well as the panel from what Mr. Lupikisha has outlined. If you have a question for him, please raise your hand and the microphone is going to be passed to you to ask that question based on the manifesto that has been outlined. The audience, the panel. Hello, Mr. Lupikisha. Uh, you talked about uh, policies. Yes. And uh, I looked at your manifesto. Yes. You outlined to say there are certain policies that you want to put in place once yes. uh, you're put into power. Yes. I would, I would like to know some of those policies. Okay. Yes. Am I taking another question or am I responding to this one first? You can... You can respond to each question as it comes. Okay. One of the policies that has to be firmly introduced at Creso is that of better academic um, learning, especially with finances. The biometric system that we have is not helping us students. It really isn't. To begin with, students do not have a payment plan that parents know about. And secondly, what do you think happens when you're not allowed to attend class and then you're also taught to write an exam at the end of it? You're not getting the very best as a student. So what we need is financial policies to begin with. I would love that to be opened, if anything, only once in a whole semester. Let management get their first quarter of the money, they'll get the rest after. Because what we need is students to be in class. They have to learn. They are paying for that service. Creso deserves, Creso owes students that much. Students need the very best they can get. And that financial policy will ensure that the students get the very best that they can. Please. Thank you. Um, my name is Marianne. Hello. Mr. President, you talked of um, indexing of the nursing in their first years. So yes. I would like to know how are you going to make sure that the indexing of these students are being done in their first years? To begin with, indexing is very critical because if you're not indexed as a nursing student, GNC does not recognize you as a student nurse who's actually learning. So what we need is actually to ask management, why are these not indexed? And let's approach it from there. Because it may be that management has a concrete reason why they're not doing so, but they don't communicate to their students. To begin with, every student, before they actually start class, these are things that must be addressed firmly. These guys, as we're enrolling them, let's check the numbers. Because this, again, pushes the aspect of them going for attachments. If we over-enroll, it's a huge problem. As they come in, let's look to ensure that we facilitate processes with the right uh, 
institutions such as GNC, let, let, let them be indexed first and let them start an attending class. Because what's the point? Someone is in their third year right now, they're not indexed. Where's the pride that you're recognized as a nurse? Right now, if a nurse who's in 3.1 kills a patient while it's at work, they won't have the backup of GNC. That's a huge problem. These are things we have to carefully look into. And that's what I'm vo going for. Thank you so much. Uh, that was Mr. Lupikisha. Uh, take and bear in mind that we are only going to allow a few questions due to time so that we can run the program uh, with time accorded to all of us. Right about now, uh, Mr. Lupikisha will take their seat and we're going to call upon the next candidate so that we can move with time. Mr. Lupikisha, you can take your seat. Thank you. Yes, that was Mr. Lupikisha, our presidential candidate. And right now, we are going to move with all the three presidential candidates to make sure that we take the president's visions for Creso University. Thereafter, we take a look at all the vice presidents. So right now, we're going to invite another presidential candidate who is none other than Mr. Luyando. Mr. Luyando, please. Thank you so much. Uh, great to see you once more again. Getting into details uh, of the manifesto, as a leader, it is very important to look where you want to be. Very important to look where you are coming from. Very important to look where you are. I have done a very good literature review from the former, former executives we've had at Crystal University. They had the same goals, almost the same. But the question is, have they achieved them? If not, that's why I have highlighted these goals to solve really the problem why Cleso University Union is failing to solve problems. In my manifesto, I highlighted establishment of a dialogue system. This is the answer to the problems that union is facing in addressing issues that concerns students. As a president, I will make sure I work tirelessly until a dialogue system is established. Because doing that would have addressed all the issues that students are facing. You can name any issue, any problem that students are facing, this dialogue system will address. Number two, enhancing students' participation. As I highlighted earlier, as a president, I understand that activities, they are within the associations. As a president, I will not rest until I make sure that activities that students have down there are done. We have a lot of associations initiatives within students. It is high time we take a leadership that cultivates these activities into something that brings development for our school. We have the sports. You can look, look for yourself. Look at how the pitch looks like. In my tenure, I'll make sure that we renovate the pitch for the sports. We have KUFA, Creso University Public Health Association. They have a lot of activities which we need to enhance through collaborations. Thank you so much. Forging, forging ahead, I stated issues of strengthening the bonds of union. Union is weak. That's why it is not head. I will make sure in my tenure, I strengthen the bonds of union through affiliations. 
overseeing and being the influence to the cabinets within the executive is the next point I highlighted in the objectives. Students, you have to understand to finish up. that team building is very really essential as a leader. I will make sure that we work hand in hand with, with each ministry. I have seen in the previous executives where the president and the vice president are the only one working. This will not happen in my tenure. We'll make sure that we work hand in hand with each ministry. Thank you so much, Mr. Chairperson. Thank you so much. Your four minutes, 30 seconds ends right now. Now, this is a wonderful time where we are going to allow questions from the audience as well as the panel. Remember, we're only giving the audience as well as the panel two questions to ask the, the, the person on the podium. So those hands can be raised and the mic will be passed to you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Rando. You've said the union becomes weak when they have in power. Now, what are you going to do? Because if the management gives you a scholarship, you will also abandon us. So what are the plan and strategies that you have for us? Thank you so much. I think I labored much on explaining dialogue system. Let's understand this. Dialogue system is about getting two parties together, agreeing on one thing. It is high time you need a good negotiator, a leader who speaks with conviction. I'll make sure that when union speaks, administration understands. One thing that we don't understand is that administration and students they see each other as if they are enemies. That should not be this. I will make sure that we present ourselves to administration like their children. Administration as our parents. And when a child speaks, a parent needs to listen. I don't know if I've answered you. Thank you so much. The next question, please. Um. Mr. President, thank you so much. I've heard a number of things that you've outlined. Um, I wanted to ask in line with, there are people that do not have access at the biometric and different people have got different stories, but my issue is with the vulnerable. There are people who have a hundred kwacha missing, 500 kwacha missing, or people in just, just to categorize it, people that are vulnerable. How in your tenure are you willing to, how are you going to come in? Thank you so much for that question. Can I ask you a question? A student, you, you know, is how much? 50 kwacha multiplied by 2,000. How much do we have each semester? My question is, where does union fee go? But I'm not saying I'm going to be using union fee to help the students. We have initiatives. I'll make sure we build Student corner. Student corner, sir. I don't know if you understand. For example, a pool. We have a lot of students who love pool. And as you go, you'll be raising, we'll be raising money. Two kwachas, one kwacha. That will be helping students who are really vulnerable. And I'll make sure that I create a system to identify who is really vulnerable. I'm that leader who understands the problems of people. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Mr. Luyando. And those two questions have been tackled. Quickly, we get to the third presidential candidate, and who is none other than Killian Mayumbelo. Fellow students, as Elia highlighted, the objective of my manifesto is centered on one thing, foster policy development in the favor of students. As an institution, we have a motto to meet the needs of today's education. But henceforth, what have we done towards that goal? 
nothing. Why is it so? Most of the policies that have been developed are centered on the management pact, but not on the interest of students. To go forth, most of the interest most of the policies that we are, I'm going to talk about are these policies that have affected highly the improvement and the need to meet that need that we wanted as the school. To start with, when voted in, we are going to ensure that as an institution, together, the students and the management, we foster together the development of policies such as the payment plan. This payment plan, I'll allow me to tackle these in a two form. We have, yes, the biometric system that has greatly affected the improvement of the students' affairs. How? Most of the people are left out on the gate. Why? Because they don't have access. How are we meeting the objectives and needs of today's educational sector if people are not accessing the educations that we said we are going to offer as a service? To start with, most of the uh, physical tests that we have in school are not accessed by these individuals that are locked out by the biometric and hence we forth we stand to say we want to meet the needs of educational. How? Members of the house, allow me to also move on by saying the fostering of development policies that we are talking about, these are issues to do with solid with international students. We have international students here. Just two days ago, one international student told me to say they paid over 3,500 just from the airport to here. And what does that entail us? The institution is not paying interest, is not giving the ear to these international students. And henceforth, we need to come up with policies that support these students so that when they come here, they have that safety to not to say in the national way I'm going, I have that security being given to me. Members of the house, we are also being told that these international students have nowhere to go when they have queries. Instead, when all they know is the management people. And henceforth, if these offices are so busy, it, it's so hard for these students to meet the solid part. And henceforth, we need to cut out that through the policy development that I'm talking about. To move on, members of the house, we are talking of the residential timings. Most of the distance students are affected by our timings as, as an institution. Why am I saying so? In December, we tell them, come for your resi residentials for one month. In January, we are telling them, come for two weeks. Which institution is going to give an employee, uh, an employer, uh, an, employ an, employment, uh, an employee member that timing? Including Creso itself, it cannot give their own staff members to go out there for that long. Then why should we subject these students? And henceforth, we why, why should we also be closing these portals for these distance students? How are they going to learn if we close these platforms, members of the house? Moving forward, we are talking of working on the timings for students so as for these to improve the effectiveness of students. Why am I saying so? Each time we are towards the exams, we have the classes going up to 21. But what does that mean? It means that the institution is telling us to say students should not study when they are from the first, from January, let's say, for example, from January to somewhere May. Students will be locked at the moment it's somewhere 18. The classes are locked. And how do you improve the institutional performance like that? Members of the house, we need to work on that. Furthermore, members of the house, allow me to also talk about the recreational activities. We need to come up with platforms that allow talent identification so that people that don't play soccer should go to another platform so as to improve on the recreational curriculums. Members of the house, allow me to move forward by also saying, as an institution, we need policies that gap the interest that are not mid-met. Why am I saying so? Most of the policies are being developed, but not in the interest of students. An example, just now we have an a particular institution, I mean, a particular policy to say if you are paying, I mean, if you come late for a particular registration, you are charged. But what fosters that late registration? It's because of the finances and the percentage that they call for. But yes, they don't realize that because they are not in our situation. Furthermore, members of the house, the policies that we are going to develop are that we need to come up with a uniform timetable. Why am I saying so? Most of the people of us, when it comes to our exams, we cry out loud to say the exams was hard. And when we ask, we find that the, the paper was combined with the university, I mean, the, but the particular university, let's say Ndola. And what does that mean? If I'm not studying from Ndola, I'm affected by the things that I learn. If I'm studying from Kreso, those people in Ndola are affected, meaning that we are not improving the standards of an institution and the reputation growth is affected highly by that particular thing. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Thank you so much. And that was Mr. Kalen Mayumbelu vying for the position of presidency.
and an open forum has been open to question Mr. Mayumbelo. Those in the audience as well as the panels have two chances of asking him questions based on the manifesto that he has uh, put across. Hands up and the mic will be passed to you. Okay. Mr. President, I hear you saying that um, you, the university is not considering um, international students. So my question is, uh, what are you going to put in place in terms of uh, helping these students? Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, to start with, in my introductions, I mentioned my manifesto is based on two things, one objective and one M. The M is simply to put the interest of students. It means that when we put the interest of students, all the gaps that are identified, such as those of the international students, are going to be closed. And by that, we'll no longer have such issues because that will be tackled in. I don't know if I've answered your question, sir. Thank you so much. The second question, please. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairperson. Uh, Mr. President, I heard you say about the biometric issue and closing of Porto. So how are you going to achieve that, knowing that Crystal University is a private institution? Because it is the same money that we students pay that they use to maintain this university. So how are you going to achieve that? Thank you. To start with, the motto for this institution is meeting the educational needs of today. So henceforth, to cater for that, we need to come up with proper payment plan, meaning that a student should not be subjected to closure of a particular gate just because they have a lower percentage. It means that we need to come up with plans such as paying a particular, in a month you pay a thousand or so, so as to ensure that you attend your classes and improve your academic performances. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Kile Mayumbelo. That was the presidential uh, last candidate to give or oh, give out their manifesto. And yes, like I made mention, it is some heating debate that has been going on. Quite a number of common views that the presidential candidates have right here. And right about now, we are going to go straight into uh, hearing also what the vice presidents have. And later on, we're going to go out uh, on a, in a short break, and then we will get to conclude our, our program. So right about now, we're going to go straight into our next vice president candidates to also highlight what they have in terms of their manifesto. And this time around, we have a female candidate on the vice presidency, which is a good thing. Somebody might be wondering, why do we just have Jane's on the panel? But hey, yes, Crystal University has got also some very quality aspiring candidates from the female sector. And at this juncture, allow me to invite the vice president from the female juncture and also an alliance member of the elite party. Yes, Madam Patience, please. Okay, um, thank you very much. As you've already heard, I am the only female standing as the vice president. Okay. So I'll just go direct to the point. I am a woman of simplified wisdom, so I won't say something that you won't understand. Okay, so thank you very much. Now, why should you vote for me on the 18th of this month? I believe that a woman is a dynamic leader of change. This is to ensure to let you know that we are going to bring about, I am going to bring about transformational ideas that is going to make Creso a better institution. Now, I want to make it clear to the president, the candidates that are standing for president, this does not mean that being a female leader as your vice, I am not going to undermine you or rather diminish you, but rather I want us to work together so that we can see how gender balanced or how well we can actually promote or rather make Creso a better institution. Going on to me being an advocator, of Crystal University between the students and their administration. I earlier highlighted that I want students to actually see their administration as a father figure, as a mother figure. This is going, this is going to mean that I am going to look at issues to do with the biometrics in connection to the school fees. Now, we are going to form an alliance, me and my political party. We're going to form an alliance or rather a consensus between the Crystal students and the administration, a proper communication to allow the students to at least learn 
And then when the exams come, maybe by then they'll have enough time to pay for their school fees. But let them learn. Because in this learning procedure, we are given exams that might be online or physical. So what you need to understand is that we are making our CAs that are needed at the end of the semester. So if people are not going to be making the semesters or rather their CS, this means that we are going to lose a lot of Christian students. But are we promoting or rather are we increasing the level at which Christian is? Definitely not, my fellow students. So we need to look at such issues that are really pressuring our hearts. Be, to be particular, my heart. So members of the house, I will go ahead and... Um, also mention about the entertainment at Crystal University. So in the past two years, Crystal University has not had a welcoming bash. Now, members of the house, this is very a letdown uh, in, in, in lack of better terms because what our freshers need to feel is being welcomed. Now you just go to an institution without people actually knowing, okay, our, our new uh, kids are here. Let us invite them. Let us make them feel welcomed. So members of the house, I am going to make sure that all that is actually put in place. My aim is to put Crystal University on the map. I am currently Miss first, Miss Face of Nature 2021, the first to be particular. I am also the first runners up Crystal University. Just last night, I am actually one of the winners of Miss My Hometown uh, Lusaka, just last night. So members of the house, my aim is to make sure that by the time I am leaving Crystal University, my God, Crystal University is going to be on the map. You know what I mean? It is going to have a positive impact when, it, uh, when we're talking about ladies and gentlemen. Now, members of the house, as I... Uh, thank you very much. Now, members of the house, or rather should I say my fellow students, we are going to look at the debate. Now, debate is actually the heart of Creso. I think most of you know. We are actually good when it comes to debate. Everyone knows. If we go for an, you know... Inter-university debate, Cresa University is going to be among us the first and second position. And we don't joke about that. So we are going to make sure that we maintain and actually get better. Members of the house, I am going to make sure that all students are actually united. And how am I going to do this? No. Can I just have two seconds? Two seconds. Thank you very much. Now, members of the house, I am also going to make sure that the students are actually... Uh, in cooperation, all faculties. And how am I going to do this? By implementing some activities that are going to bring us together as one. Because together, we can. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. That was Patience uh, Zulu, the Vice President, candidate uh, at Creso University. And right about now, we allow two questions from the audience as well as the, the candidates that are in front. We have a hand from a presidential candidate Yes, sir. Um, thank you. My first question is, Crystal University is mostly populated by our heroes in nursing. What exactly are you going to do to assist them get the best of education at Crystal? Secondly, I'm a debater, and thanks to the Debate Association and the entire team, we've managed to win the best of the best awards in debate. How exactly are you going to address, and please point them out, the problems that the Debate Association is facing currently? Thank you. Okay, so thank you very much. Now, when it comes to the nursing department, these are issues, I will outline, I outline them. Some issues that we're actually facing are the issues of attachments. We have issues of missing results. So we are going to actually uh, speak or rather advocate for our fellow nurses. I am going to advocate for my fellow nurses because I am facing the same situation. I'm actually a nurse in 3.1. So I am going to advocate to make sure that we attend our attachments to be practical. Our attachments at the right time so that because nursing is hands-on. So I am going to make sure that we attend our practicals and so that we become better nurses for a better Zambia. To answer your second question, I think the best I can do for debate is actually to advertise it more, better way. Because if you advertise your association in a way that people cannot even, you know, look away when you're talking, trust me, people are going to come in numbers and see that you guys are actually doing something for the university. Thank you very much. Uh, 
Thank you so much. Uh, I have two questions for you. The first one, I make me understand how how gender balance is going to uh, make Creso University uh, the best, uh, the better place. Secondly, um, how are you going to make sure, as a vice president, that uh, you come to the consensus with the management over the biometric issue, because it stands to be the most crucial. Because being the first year student. I've been experiencing a lot of challenges uh, uh, by the biometric data. So how are you going to come to the consensus with government? I mean, with the uh, Crystal University management? Okay, can you kindly repeat your first question? The first question, I want you to make me understand how gender balance is going to make okay. Crystal University a better place because I'm trying to link the two, but I'm, I'm failing. Okay, okay. Um, thank you very much for that question. So I would want to outline and make you understand that most women, or rather most ladies, do not feel very confident. Women are actually mostly sidelined. And this is why I am here to actually represent them. Women feel they are not empowered. So if they are given a chance, then a better and stable university we shall create. You know? To answer your second question, this is why I am standing, because I want to be that best advocate, that best manipulator that you need to positively entice the management with confident words that the university students need. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. That was the Vice President, Ms. Patience Zulu. And right now we take one and the last vice presidential debate uh, in this uh, debate session that we have had. And yes, he's the last, but not really the least. So let's call upon our last debater, who is holding our aspiring in the position of vice presidency, who is none other than Namenda Gift, your owner, sir. Thank you very much, the chair, for the opportunity to stand before the students. Good afternoon once again, and I'm Gift Namenda, contesting for vice president. And I should make mention that I'm actually an alliance vice president, an alliance that is called Alliance Party for Change uh, that we need at Crystal University. My presidential alliance candidate is Inokilo Pikisha, the man who is able and is possible with him to get things done. So to begin with, in my manifesto, I talked about improved social and academic standard, uh, standards. This is going to be done through engagement with other union members. I'm going to work with one of the members that introduced themselves, Louis Mpalash for academics, as this is easy responsibility. And they engage the, mini, uh, the office of the quality assurance, the office of the dean of students, the office of the director of exam, to ensure that the quality assurance is able to, take, to undertake an assessment of evaluation on its students. Students should air out their views. Are they satisfied with academic services being offered at the university? That is going to be used as a platform for evaluation as university management. Moving forward, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to talk about the issue of effective and time research supervision. What is delaying most of student university uh, of Creso is not because they are not reaching the fourth year, but they are reaching fourth year without completing their research project, which is a mandatory for you to graduate. And as I come in as the vice president, we are going to engage the Creso University Research Ethics Committee, shortly known as CUREC, and ensure that the supervisions assigned to students are engaged and when called upon are responding. I've heard students telling me that they are supervisors every time they need to talk to them. They are busy. Who is then now going to facilitate the research project and ensure that the eligibility for graduation is timely and effective? These parents will not manage to be paying extra fees that comes as a result of late completion of the course when it is clearly outlined in our vision that it's a four years course. Moving forward, I'm going to talk about the issue of effectively and clinical attachments for both nurses and public health, inclusively the business faculty. My president, you are covered. What we are going to do is to work with the student board as a union, I'm not going to be there as a platform to show off myself, but as a platform to collectively work as a union and engage the management, the office of the registrar, the office of the dean affairs, his excellency, Mr. Makawed. We're going to engage him and ensure that the heads of department are critically analyzed and ensure that students go for clinicals on timely. 
business students are only given a month in a semester to do their clinicals, which is not enough. In as much as we are best in theories, let's be best in practice because it is practice that sells you out. Moving forward to my next point is systematic payment plan. Ladies and gentlemen, the biometric cannot be abolished completely, but what can solve that mystery is very simple. If you are going to develop a payment plan with management, of course, ladies and gentlemen, as I take power this coming week, I'm going to engage the accounts office, particularly the bazaar, the office of the dean of students, come up with a systematic payment plan that as we close this semester, we're going to give our parents and show them that on this date next to semester, let's say on 30th June, you're supposed to pay, give me this much. And then on 30th August, you're supposed to give me this much. In that way, we're going to ensure that parents are able to organize the resources needed at the right time. And no student will be stranded at the biometric gate, ladies and gentlemen. The next thing I'm going to do is scholarship advocates. You and I believe me that we have issues of missing results each and every single semester. This is very simple. There's a communication breakdown between the office of the director of exams, the head of departments, and respective lecturers. Because when you go to lectures, I believe you, I'm sure some of you have gone to lecture, they will tell you that they have a copy of your results, which the director of exam is saying they do not have, and lecturers submit results to the head of department. So we are going to bridge that gap of communication and ensure that we have effective and timely communication of results. When results missing are sorted out, no one will be removed, only scholarship, and as a university, will be able to maintain scholarship for students that are vulnerable. Thank you so much for the reminder, Chair. As I conclude, allow me to make mention that as a university student, we cannot operate as a single board. We need other universities to share knowledge, share policies. How are they managing to work? Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Next week on Friday, let's get these uh, things done. It's your Vice President, Gift and Amanda. Thank you so much. Uh, that was the last candidate from the presidential vice presidents, as well as the presidential debaters, Mr. Namenda. And as toward, we're going to allow two more questions from the audience as well as the panel so that we can get clarity based on his manifesto. Questions, please, from the audience as well as the panel. Um, Mr. Namenda, how are you, sir? Fine, thank you. How are you? Fine, thank you. I admire your wisdom, sir. I just want you to just specify on how you are going to work out a payment plan with the accountants as well as the administration. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Teddy. He's also a candidate. Uh, how I'm going to implement the payment plan is very simple. Like I said, we need to engage the senior buzzer from accounts department and the dean of students. This payment plan, ladies and gentlemen, maybe you might not be aware. Standing before you is a class representative. I'm well aware that this thing has been there, but it has not been implemented and it has not been distributed to students. So we need that payment plan to be distributed. The, account, the accounts has their timetable of how much they need for a particular date. So we are going to make that timetable known to students. We are going to give students that timetable to give to their parents so that as they come the following semester, they will be able to expect what much and what percentage on which date precisely. So ladies and gentlemen, I will engage the office of the buzzer, the office of the dean of students, so that the Eden uh, systematic payment plan is actualized and distributed to students upon the last date of examination every single semester. Thank you. Um, yes, sir. I only have one question for you. So I have seen your manifesto and it's quite good. So um, what surety can you give us? Uh, like if all your plans that you've, that you've made, if they don't work out, what surety can you give us as, as students that you are going to work out on your manifesto? Thank you very much, um, Ms. Mercy. She's also a contestant on accom uh, accommodation. Ladies and gentlemen, like I said before, and I'll say it again, what we are going to do, the street that you need is experience. We need leaders that have been ruling, the leaders that have approached management on various platforms and issues, and tabled out the issues and feedback gotten. I am a class representative, like I mentioned, I've been going to management, and the feedback I was given was, could you have at least the union backing your allegation so that we know that the problem that you're bringing on table is the facts on the ground. But every time I went to the previous union, they served well, but I didn't get the backup and I never got positive feedback from management. So what we're going to do is, I, when I become a union, 
and I've, I've tabled these issues. Just last week, I submitted my letter to the register over issues of untimely research uh, supervision and attachment. He said, I need to get a letter from the union, of which I wasn't been given a letter up to date. But if the union becomes me, who's had the experience of the same things that we are going through, I'll be able to deliver and I'll be able to advocate effectively because I've read of the platform and I've engaged management on a number of factors. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Uh, Honorable Namenda, Vice President, aspiring candidate, you may take a seat. Yes, it has been a presidential debate here at Creso University. Very vibrant youths have come on board to aspire for various uh, positions here at Creso University as Cusco holds uh, elections. People are on the race to become leaders in the Cusco uh, group here at Creso University to represent their students. But before we can conclude this matter, allow us to go on a short break and soon we're going to get back and you catch us on the other side so that we can give you nothing but the base that which Creso University has to offer. Thank you. Catch us on the other side. All right. Uh, so, uh, guys...
Well, welcome back to this most heated debate session that we have had here at Creso University. And yes, of course, we have had the various uh, candidates here uh, ranging from the presidency going to the vice presidency. And of course, it has been most interacting and uh, the audience has been so exciting right here uh, at Prism Africa. And right about now, we want to check also through the audience that we have had on the other side, that is on YouTube and we'll very good... Debate session that we have had. very good uh, views that we have had here on YouTube. So we are going to take some of the comments that we have been uh, receiving on YouTube and uh, pay particular attention, most especially the contestants, so that you can hear what the people have to say here on YouTube. So the first question here and uh, a contribution, rather a statement, uh, says on YouTube that this one is coming from Nelia Alice Daka. And she's saying, I love to move with people who know what they are really going to do for the university in truth. I think that is a compliment coming from Nelia Alice Daka. And this one right here says, if you don't know the whole panel, are debaters or simply contesters, I like what they are doing and how they tackle questions. Much more love, guys. The other one here says, clinical placements are big issue. We complete school, but hands killed zero. That is coming from Martha Yamboto. Just lastly, but not the least, uh, allow me to take up Taka Photography, who is also uh, right here watching on YouTube. And he says, I am so happy to see my people giving out nice views about Creso. I love you all from Taka. All right. That was another segment of comments coming from the YouTube section. And right about now, we go straight to uh, getting to hear a little bit of a mind-blowing question that is going to be given to all the contestants or rather the aspiring candidates right here to just hear exactly what they have to say before we can close up. But I have two questions that I want all the aspiring candidates to answer in less than 30 seconds. So the first question goes as follows. What inspired you, take note, what inspired you to vie for the position that you are vying for? That is to the candidates, what inspired you to vie for the position that you are vying for? The second question, how do you intend to bridge the gap between management and the students? These two questions are to be answered by all the candidates. Same question, but to be answered by all the candidates in less than 30 seconds. We're going to start from our right this time and then going to our left. So we start from Mr. Killian and then it is going to go to our left, just like there. Thank you, Mr. Killian. Thank you, Mr. Killian. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, what inspired me to actually become an advocate or a leader for an institution? It's simple. I must mention that the gaps that have analyzed or evaluated are simply because the interest of most institutions or most of our students at this institution are not put first. And henceforth, that is an inspiring comment that I actually got. Reason being, it's because I realized to say the interest of students, if I to serve the most, then together with that interest role, we can together develop the institution. Furthermore, how do I want to do that? Simple, simply by coming up with a simple dialogue system with management through policy development that favor the student's interest, and that way we can together develop the institution. Thank you. Thank you so much. The question still stands to all the candidates. What inspired you to stand in the position that you're standing for, as well as how do you intend to bridge the gap between management and the students? Bearing in mind that this is the most heated issue that literally all the candidates are talking about. So tell us what inspired you and how you intend to bridge the gap. Thank you so much once more again, uh, Mr. Chaperson. I have placing burdens as a leader. When I walk around school, I see how students are suffering. I see problems. <laughs> And that is a burden to me. And I'm inspired to stand for them. How do we bridge the barrier between administration and students? I stated 
in my course saying dialogue system. It is the solution. System is the solution. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. The same question goes to the next contestant. Thank you so much, Mr. Chairperson, for this opportunity. Okay, so what inspired me? So looking at Queso University, I am also a victim to these challenges that uh, all the students that are there or rather should I say most of the students. So knowing that I can be an advocator, knowing that I am confident, I decided that I am a victim. So if I can speak, then why not? So if I can, I can be an advocator for both myself, I'm a student, students all over Creso to the management, then I think that is going to actually make Creso a better place. The second question, how, do I, how am I going to manage to bridge the gap between the students and uh, Cresa University? Firstly, before you tackle a certain problem, you need to understand who is involved at that, in that particular problem. So if it's uh, a problem to do with school fees, you need to understand that uh, the accounts is are actually affected and the administration is affected. So you go to the accounts, then you, you go to the dean, you involve the accounts. You get the views from the students as indicated. So I feel it is just a part of you being the best advocator you can actually be for your fellow students because I feel that if you practice, you become a better leader. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next candidate, please. Thank you very much, Chair. Uh, what inspired me to contest precisely for Vice Presidents? Uh, it is because of the uh, small scale platform I had to work with the management of which I needed the maximum capacity in the recognized student board to represent students at a much large platform. In my capacity as a class representative, I needed backup from the union and the backup is what I'm going to bring on the table and use it to the advantage of the students. Coming to your second question, Chair, the question is how do I intend to bridge the gap between management and students? Thank you very much. For the time that elapsed when I was outlining my manifest, I, for, I didn't mention one stuff, which is the student suggestion box. We are going to bring this student suggestion box where students will be able to actually write issues affecting them. And as union, we are going to read them, find solutions, and present them to management and be able to give feedback through a class representative and through devotion on Wednesday, ladies and gentlemen. In that way, we'll be able to get views from the affected people and present them to policymakers, which is our able management. It is able, it's possible. Let's get things done. Thank you. Thank you so much. Much. The final and last candidate, please. Thank you. My inspiration is one word, vision. I have a vision for Creso, and it's very simple. An institution where each and every student has primed that, yes, I studied at Creso, I got the best degree and best diploma of my life at Creso. How do I intend to make this work? Friends, I don't just need you as you vote for me. I need you even more after I'm in that position because we can collectively achieve this with one voice. And in the spirit of oneness, I'm inviting all of you on Monday from 14 hours to 16 hours, five pictures per individual provided by Taka Photography for free. Thank you. Well, thank you so very much. And now we come to the end of this debate session. And yes, like we made mention, it is one heated debate session, and yes, of course, you have heard it for yourself. All the students out there, you have been given a platform to hear out what all your candidates have to give to you. And of course, now you are at liberty to pick a decision, to pick a siding where you want to cast your vote. Hence, going forward, you are informed, and the ECC in conjunction with all the management and stakeholders at Creso Universities are trying all level best to make sure that this platform is given to all that are aspiring to do the right thing at Creso University. Going forward, this has been me, Frank Nyondo, deliberating and moderating this wonderful and beautiful debate session that has gone on. And of course, one thing that we want to make mention is that Creso University is saddened, so deeply saddened at the passing of our former President, who is none other than but Lupia Bwizanbanda, and we mourn with the nation even as we celebrate Youth Day right here. And Creso University joins the rest of this country to celebrate Youth Day in the morning mood, even as we mourn our late former president. So the Biu Biu 
Say a happy, happy youth day. Let me hear the bubu say a happy, happy youth day. Can I hear you say that once more? Happy, happy youth day. We're going to see you on the other side. Amazing, isn't it? The zeal to want to grow, to become better and achieve greatness, to want to learn and expand in your profession. But wait a minute, you need a conducive environment that couches and supports your development, a place for growth, innovation, and change. One with instructors that have your best interests at heart. To tailor make every lesson with exceptional standard education. An environment that supports your moral growth. One that delivers quality education to groom you and set your potential so high to become an entrepreneur or join the workforce. Build you to be environmental cautious and facilitate its best practices. But that's not all. You need a clear runway with the best facilities to equip you in delivering the best quality health, grooming you to bring out the best in others. And we believe that the best meal and service you can deliver is a mixture of etiquette in reception and just a dash of curiosity. How you acted, rejuvenate with a variety of sports and associations your skills and enhance your development because when you come to university it's people meeting people learning from others and at the end of the day it is working together and building something bigger than ourselves the good conversations expressing who we are and the relationships we establish are you ready for change because we are